Hello everyone this is part 58 of what if Naruto learned the secret of shadow clone, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, to share, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the, intro. Join my membership the perks are great, it's in the description. Iwa was of all things, a village of resilience. Recent events notwithstanding the mood was hopeful. They still had their lives which allowed for a chance. A chance for a future and maybe, something better. In their cage's office, Kuritsuki sighed and worked through materials and goods reports. They were a vassal state of Azushio now, which meant their new masters wanted regular reports of not only what they were doing, but what came and went through their village. Once more, she considered it a small price to pay if it meant they survived. Certainly better than what happened to Kumo if that news was to be believed. Unfortunate that she couldn't send a scout team to confirm it. Behind her, Akatsuki leaned against the wall and grunted, what do you think will happen now? With Kumo no more, there's no one to oppose the Uzumaki. We certainly don't have that power anymore. Whether they ever really did have that power went unsaid. Kuritsuki shrugs, having already debated with herself on the subject more than enough, doesn't matter. With Kumo gone we'll have to bide our time. It might not happen in my lifetime, or the next generations, but someone will figure something out. Pausing as she leaned back and looked at her guard, Kuritsuki offered him a smirk, at the least, we can be thankful that we didn't suffer the same fate. We could have ended up as a smoking crater. Akatsuki wanted to mention that having an existence that was little more than functional slaves didn't seem much better, but held his tongue. Best not to get on his cage's bad side. It only proves how evil the Uzumaki really are though. Why annihilate Kumo when negotiation was an option? Not even allowing women and children to leave either. Despicable. We weren't much better. Or did you forget your history lessons about what Kumo and Iwa did to Azushio Gakura of the past? Kuritsuki sighs and goes back to writing, wishing her grandfather was here to do this and not her. If the Uzumaki were the evil overlords Kumo said they were, we'd be just as much of a crater as they are. Rather merciful if you ask me. My, my lady, you of all of us should hate the Uzumaki the most. How can you side with them? I'm not. Kuritsuki didn't even pause in her writing, even if her tone dropped into something far colder than she normally used. I do in fact, hate the Uzumaki. More than anyone can ever understand. Or at least, their clan leader Naruto. But, I can recognize that we were in the wrong. If he had wanted, we would all be dead and there would be nothing the world could do about it. Why do you suppose he didn't? Pausing and waiting for an answer that she knew wasn't going to come, Kuritsuki motioned out her window to the village that was going about its day without her. He cares about people. All of them. Civilians young and old, ninja, you and me even. He gave us a chance, and when it came down to making a choice, my grandfather chose to take the village's sins onto himself. Sacrificing his life so we could have another chance. Hand pausing, Kuritsuki stared into the stone of her desk, Naruto honored that sacrifice. Accepting Onoki's life in lieu of the rest of the village. Now Iwa gets to continue on into the future, even if we barely function as a ninja village anymore. Looking away from the bright light from outside, Akatsuki crossed his arms, that bastard deserves to burn in hell for what he's done. Oh, I won't discount that. But we're ninja, we've all done something for us to deserve the fires. Naruto just proved he wasn't so different than the rest of us. Both Kuritsuki and Akatsuki look up, interrupted in their conversation by clapping coming from the closed door of her office. Naruto stood there, a grin on his face as he walked towards her. Well said, well said. Good to know you're being so pragmatic about this. Naruto paused a few paces from her desk, waiting for the outburst he knew was coming. Not disappointing him, Akatsuki was stepping towards him, though careful to stay well outside of striking range, what are you doing here? Leave, you don't belong. Considering the larger man for a moment as one might an annoying fly, Naruto turned bored eyes to the calm Kuritsuki, control your dog, we need to have a chat and I don't want to be here any longer than I need to be. Dark eyes latching onto Naruto's own blue, it was Kuritsuki who finally sighed and waved a hand over her shoulder. Akatsuki, take a walk. I'll be fine. 
Neck almost snapping with how fast he turned to his cage, Akatsuki scowled deeply, you want me to leave you alone with this this? Yes, I do. That's an order Akatsuki. You should not be alone with him. If he wanted me dead, hell all of us dead, we already would be. Go on Akatsuki, I'll be fine. Naruto watched as Akatsuki trembled in place, stuck between deciding if following orders or fighting against him was a better option. He could see the gears turning in the larger man's head, and only just held off from antagonizing him. It'd be a boring fight. Not even worth it. At least Kurama's priorities hadn't changed. Standing up straight and bowing to Kuritsuki, Akatsuki reigned in his temper finally, as you wish, Lady Suchikij. Turning smartly on a heel, Akatsuki made for the door. Eyes locked onto Naruto until he brushed past the team, Akatsuki left the office peacefully in the end. There is silence in the office as Kuritsuki returns to her work while Naruto watches her for a moment. Well, at the least she wasn't the emotional wreck that he had left in the dirt. Chuckling and walking forward, he unsealed a medium-sized bottle and two glasses. Placing them down and opening the liquor, Naruto filled each glass in turn. Well, gotta say, good to see you can be so level-headed about things. What choice do I have? Kuritsuki stopped finally, eyeing Naruto and the drink he was pushing her way. Why are you here? Naruto took a seat in one of the provided chairs, leaning back as he grabbed one of the glasses, oh you know. I was around and had some time. Thought I'd see what your reaction was going to be. Naruto watched her take the other glass, eyeing the amber liquid within before taking a sip. Well, she was braver than A. Points to her. Kumo is gone I'm sure you've heard. Wanted to know what you thought about that. What I think ha. Huh? The alcohol burned down Kuritsuki's throat, but she rather liked the smoky aftertaste all the same. I don't care. Iwa is here and Kumo isn't, that's all I need to know. Hmm, not worried Iwa will be next. You would not be a man of your word if we were. Unless you're admitting to being a monster like I said you were repeatedly. Oh I'm a monster, but not one that lies. That's for humans. Ignoring the curious look from Kuritsuki, Naruto hummed and took another sip, so, no plots or plans from you. That's a good thing then, shows progress. Kuritsuki shrugged, there's not much for me to do. I can't fight against Akami. Here Naruto took a sip of his own, grinning and pointing at her, you could try. Might be fun. Feeling some irritation at the open mockery, Kuritsuki took another drink and stared hard at Naruto, why are you here? Just to antagonize me, ruin my day. Laughing and shaking his head, Naruto rocked in the chair a bit, you know, if you had shown me this side of you first, I might have liked you a bit more. Seeing she was if anything, more irritated, Naruto sighed and let the chair fall back onto all of its legs. Guess no more fun for him. I'm here to check in. Make sure you're following your orders and no funny business was going on out here. Kuritsuki frowned and looked almost ready to throw her drink at him. You can't just show up and do as you please whenever you want. You aren't the cage here. You don't own Iwa. Smirking, Naruto's eyes flashed with inner light for a moment. Oh, I don't. Remind me, why are you the cage now? Ah, there it was. Rage flashed behind those eyes now, and Naruto was reminded that at her core, Kuritsuki would kill him if she had the power. Standing slowly and finishing his drink, Naruto placed his empty glass next to the mostly full bottle. Look, I'm still kinda hoping that one day you'll come around to see my way of thinking. We don't have to be enemies. Hell, not even friends either. But we could respect each other. Besides, there are scarier things out there than me. Anything more terrifying than you had to have come from the very depths of hell itself. Kuritsuki eyed the empty glass and then Naruto himself. Unless you have a sister. Technically true, but I'm way more of a threat than she can ever hope to be. Naruto huffed and looked out on the village below them, senses feeling out to get a general feel of things. But it's fair, I guess, for you to feel that way about me. I only spared your village and your people. Didn't even kill your ninja, at least the ones that didn't come and attack my home. Oh yes, very magnanimous of you. Sparing us and killing my grandfather in front of me. Shrugging and not refuting her argument as it would be a wasted effort, Naruto motioned with his chin out of the window, I thought I told you, reduced forces, 200 or less. Eyes wide, Kuritsuki felt something cold grip her heart, we did. Our active forces are below 180 just to be sure. 
Had she missed something, or had her irritation angered him? Shrugging, Naruto turned back towards her, walking to her desk and placing both hands on its surface. You're smart, Kuritsuki. Honestly, I'm impressed with you. Eyes glowing for a moment, Naruto smiled finally and stood up straight. And since you're doing as you're told, I can head back home without any worries. This was just a check up, and I've got more to do today. People to see, monsters to kill. You know how it goes. There's only one real monster to worry about these days. Kuritsuki released a breath she hadn't noticed she was holding. That terror that gripped her was hard to shake. Iwa did not want to share Kumo's fate. Well, I think we should do this again sometime. I'll be around Miss Suchikij. Stepping back, with a whisper Naruto is gone, leaving Kuritsuki alone in her office. Eyeing the spot where he had been standing, Kuritsuki tried to get a lock on what she was feeling. It was a hard task, her eyes turning to the bottle he had left behind. Her reflection stared back at her, questioning her for answers she didn't have. Reaching across the table, she snagged the bottle and refilled her glass, deciding it didn't matter. None of it did, so she would get back to work, make it an early day, and maybe get some enjoyment out of spending time around a peaceful village. Really was too bad. Good as this alcohol was, she had been hoping it was poison. B. The council chambers were quiet, soon at having just delivered the news about Kumo to the assembled clan head situated around her meeting table. She had half expected Hyashi to blow up right away, but even he seemed to be contemplating things quietly. Good for him, saved her the headache. Shibi Abarain was the first to raise a hand, what does this mean now for Kanoa and our plans? Azushio is our ally and thus, we should be safe from any further action. But even still, we had a certain hand in events that led up to Kumo's destruction. Soon it waved the concern off easily at the least, from Azushio was safe. Lord Uzumaki has even admitted that while Kanoa had wronged him in the past, he had worked towards forgiving us. We aren't our predecessors after all. Much like Kiri, we have a second chance. Soon worked a finger at the table top, chewing on her lip a bit, to think one man could have enough power to eradicate an entire village. To wipe it off the map. That could have been us. The Nara clan head, Shikaku, grunted at that, but it wasn't. Our own cage had the good sense to ally ourselves closely with the new Azushio and it has paid off. Now the question is, what next? Should we not expand, take some of Kumo's territory for our own? The land of fire could benefit from the minerals and heavy metals available in those mountains. Hyashi had his own thoughts on the matter, but held them in now that there were opportunities to consider. Soon could see the logic in that, one of Kanoa's and thus the land of fire's larger threats is gone now. Guess there is less to worry about. Oh, I did not say we should not worry. There is still very much a monster we must tread carefully around. Hyashi's dislike of Naruto was still very real and very present. Rolling her eyes, Suna taps a fingernail on the table, need I remind you Hyashi, that is Naruto Uzumaki you're talking about. A son of Kanoa even if he's left to rebuild his clan's ancestral home. He's kept his word, and we should be doing the same. Shikaku agrees with their cage on that matter, something to think about, did we ever track down just who attempted to assassinate Naruto in that bombing? Think he might still hold a grudge over that. Soom had heard enough about the Uzumaki Lord from her own brat, something tells me Naruto isn't one to worry about the small things. And someone blowing up his apartment is something he'd absolutely consider small. Hyashi grunted at that, need I remind you my daughter was almost killed in that blast. The daughter you all but disowned at the time. Remind me. Turning to the bestial woman, Hyashi's eyes tightened, what my clan does internally is none of your concern. Just as yours is none of mine. Boo. I'm real scared there Hyuga. How's the new desk working for ya? Once Soom had heard that little story through the grapevine, she vowed to never let it go. It was too amazing, and she owed Naruto and that little Hanata as drink or ten. Why I never, and you will continue to never so we can get on with this meeting. Soon had eyed both Hyashi and Soom, watching them both relax back into their seats. Better. Hyashi huffed, I still don't trust that boy. Well your feelings on the matter are biased, so I'll take that into account. Soon had turned back to the rest of the table, letting her own plans be known, for now I do not plan to take any action whatsoever. Azushio is an ally and thus, we wouldn't condemn them in the first place. The fire Daimyo agrees with my assessment. 
At this point the only one who might speak up worth noting is of course the Lightning Daimyo. But with no military to speak of outside of whatever ragtag force he can put together, we don't care. Shikaku did raise a hand again, wanting to point out a good point made by a shitty person, a land expansion wouldn't be a bad idea to consider, given the circumstances. Shibi was quick to rebut him, that would require us to go through the land of hot water, another ally to Rizushio. Well good thing I meant it when I said Kanoa would not be taking any action regarding this. Soon it shared a hard look with everyone in the room. Even the so far quiet Anoiki. Kanoa is to wait, see where the dust settles and focus on our current projects. One of which, is some goodwill assistance to the land of rain. That got Hyashi to speak up once more, and why should we be helping that backwater of all places? Doesn't that terrorist group hail from there? I hate to agree. Soon resisted the urge to spit onto the floor, but Lord Hugo has a point. Why are we helping them? Soon had sighed, leaning back as she considered how to word this. Peace. Seeing questioning and curious faces turned towards her, the elder cage began to elaborate. Rain has been the site of numerous proxy confrontations through the years. Villages, including our own, ran through and did battle in their lands before leaving and letting the people of Rain pick up the pieces. Over and over again, we haven't once looked back and thought maybe to correct our past mistakes. But, the world is changing, people's hearts are changing. Perhaps it's time for us to do the same. So, get ahead of the curve, much as Azushio has then. I kinda like it. Shikaku sat back, considering it. Kanoa could show themselves to be not the powerhouse nation, but the peaceful one. A softer solution to the suddenly very real threat of Azushio. Sure, did Azushio want peace more than anyone? Of course. But they had now shown they were willing to wipe out entire villages, while Kanoa had not. It could be an interesting play. Soon had watched as the rest of the table began to mutter over it, making plans while she sat back and waited. This is what she needed, them cooperating on something that would bring goodwill, not deaths. She'd have to thank that pervert of hers later. Well, if there's nothing else, this meeting is over then. Standing along with everyone else, Soon had left, leaving behind the idle conversations that began to spring up behind her. Yes, they were interested in a new idea. Just what she wanted. The trip up the three floors back to her office was uneventful while her mind wandered over just how they would approach Rain with their offer to help. She could probably leave the particulars to everyone else, that was what a council was for. She would have to deal directly with their leader in the end though, which meant she would have to deal with pain. Peacefully at that, she could already feel the headache coming on. Opening her door, she decided her headache might have had another origin altogether. Jiraiya sat before her desk, laughing at something the other occupant of the room had most likely said. Naruto sat on her desk facing her, already shaking a rather large bottle of sake towards her, hey there Barchan. Took you long enough. You brat, what are you doing here? Don't you have a city to run? Naruto shrugged as she took the bottle from him, already pouring herself a glass as the door shut behind her, surprisingly, clones are a big help in that. Plenty of spare time to see lovely women around the world. Oi, Sunad's off limits, go stick your pecker somewhere else. Jiraiya grumbled as Naruto rolled around and sat in the chair next to him, the little punk. Don't you have enough? I should say yes, boo. Naruto was grinning as he watched Sunad come around her desk, he didn't miss the flush on her face, how about it Sunad, wanna ditch the pervert for the younger version. It was always good to mess with Jiraiya, and it wasn't like the old pervert didn't deserve it. Jiraiya was already turning to the woman of his life, Haim, will you please tell this brat to knock it off? Oh I don't know, he's got May hooked, maybe I should see what all the fuss is about. Sunad grinned at the fear that crossed Jiraiya's face, young men are just full of energy. Naruto cackled as Jiraiya looked ready to explode, but it was Jiraiya who turned to the younger man, I will skin you alive, just try it. Rolling her eyes and deciding men were stupid, Sunad sighed and took a drink. Boo. That was nice, relax you old goat. You've got nothing to worry about. Naruto shook his own head as the pervert deflated, Kami pervy sage, I figured by now you'd know when I'm messing with you. Ignoring Jiraiya mumbling about smart-mouthed brats who should know better, Soon it turned to Naruto, so Gaki, to what do we owe the visit? Just a house call or something serious. Never really knew with him. It could be anything depending on his mood. 
Little of both. Ino wanted to visit her parents, so she's out and about in the village. Hanata is here too, said she needed to have a word with Hyashi. Something about Hanabi-chan and Konohamaru. You know anything about that? Atsunad's snort of laughter, Naruto sighed heavily, do I wanna know? No one should get in the way of young love. Well, I won't deny that. Naruto surely wouldn't. He'd offer a prayer for Konohamaru all the same. Hyuga women were not for the weak. Oh and as per usual, there's a riptide team with her. They'll be good. Leaning back in his chair, Jiraiya eyed the young leader next to him, so, what are y'all really here for Naruto? You would have sent the girls under escort if they just wanted to visit their families. Maybe I don't trust Hyashi to pull something stupid. Normal people wouldn't put it past Naruto to be cautious. Even if Hanata could probably put down everyone left in the Hyuga clan by herself, and Ino. Well, he didn't want to think about the damage she could pull off. Jiraiya isn't taking the bait, aha. Uh -huh. After hearing about a certain mountain top village that was just wiped off the map. No one is trying anything. Especially here. Ah, uh, right. That. Naruto sighed. He should have known he couldn't bluff his way out of this one. Just wanted to give Yara a courtesy heads up. I'll be headed to rain soon. Need to have a word with pain. You think that's a good idea Naruto? Showing actual concern, Sunad leaned forward to come back into the conversation. Two Rinnegan uses in one place didn't sound like a good mix. Is there anything I do that seems particularly wise? Naruto chuckles as Sunad gives him a disgruntled look, I'll be safe. The girls would skin me alive if I started a fight now. Jiraiya smirked as he pointed a half-empty glass at the team, I'm sure those girls would bring you back just to kill you again if you started a fight you couldn't win. Like there's anyone alive that could give me any real trouble. Sunad had her own matching smirk as she finished her own drink, I'll make sure to tell that to Hanata. She's such a sweet girl. Nearly panicking, Naruto gave Sunad a pleading look, you wouldn't. You love me Bar Chan. Oh, do I? You sure? But but, coastal beach house. Oh, I suppose I do. Jiraiya shook himself, there's no way you're that easily bought off. I have grandchildren to spoil soon. I'm giving the hat to Shikaku. Sunid's smile grew as Jiraiya coughed into his drink. Good, the goat could still suffer a surprise or two. Turning back to Naruto, Sunid offered him a more genuine smile, you'll come back safely, right? Of course, I've got too much to live for. And this is a peaceful talk, well, it's supposed to be. They better be, I won't put up with it if something goes wrong. Sunid grumbled as she refilled his glass and then her own. Now you sound like the girls. Naruto took a sip as Sunid offered him a sly smirk, I'm keeping you far away from May. Older women were scary. You started this, don't shy away when you'd won the game. Sunid shared a grin with the brat before relaxing back in her chair. Life certainly was good at the moment. And be nice, Jiraiya went through the effort of offering an olive branch to Rain. Hey, I'll keep that in mind. Finishing his drink, Naruto stood and bowed to both of the elders. I'll be seeing Yara around, Bar Chan, pervert. And then he was gone, leaving Suna to contemplate her life while Jiraiya sighed and turned his eyes to her. Haim. Oh hush, I'm tired. This chair wasn't a long-term plan for me anyway. We need some younger blood here. Someone who can see how the world is moving. I'm over it all, and I want my rest. Jiraiya stood, coming around to gently lay a hand on her shoulder, some would say you running away for a few decades would count as rest. And anyone brave enough to say that to my face would be a brave fool. Soon it huffed but enjoyed the gentle shoulder massage. Hmm, that's nice. Heim. Hmm. Soon it rolled her neck to one side, hoping he'd take the hint and work a little higher. Could you not tease the boy so much? Chuckling, Sunid placed a hand over his own, don't be an idiot, he's old enough to be my son. Don't you mean GR? You want to keep getting lucky old man? Shutting up. Jiraiya was a pervert and rash sometimes, but he knew a warning when he heard it. Sunid hummed and relaxed further, good boy. Her thoughts strayed, to peaceful days surrounded by a happy and burgeoning family. Maybe, it could actually happen this time. Time stopped for no one after all, not even her. B. It was with a whisper that Naruto found himself atop a tower, nearly a thousand miles away from Kanoa. Utilizing chakra to stay dry from rain's most common weather event, the Uzumaki considered what was to come. 
Would pain let this happen? Fight him. Something in between. Naruto sure hoped not, he wasn't in the mood for a fight right now. I sure am. Rile him up a bit. I bet he'd give us a decent fight. I really do need to give you something better to do. Give me and the Matatabi a body, I'll have plenty to do then. Kurama chuckled as Naruto groaned but continued to look out over the sprawling and haphazardly repaired city. You okay Naruto? These people deserve better than this. It's wrong what all the other nations have done here over the years. And now thanks to that sensei of yours, they're on the path to correcting those mistakes. Naruto did have to agree that Jiraiya had come up with a good idea, this time. Yeah, that's true. Guess I'll have to thank the old pervert later. Let's not get too hasty now. He still needs a beating. You just want to fight. Of course. Shaking his head at lunatic Biju, Naruto turned as he felt a presence appear behind him. Turning back and offering a glowing purple eye to another set of Rinnegan, Naruto grinned, Elo Pain, up for a chat. Is that why you're here, to talk? Naruto hadn't sent any type of communication in all this time, Pain had been content to keep the distance between them. But with Naruto here now, on the eve of the destruction of a major village, well. Strange things happened when one came into power. Do you still crave peace? Always and forever. I'll prefer the carrot to the stick any day of the week. Kumo would probably like a word. Here Naruto shrugged, he wouldn't deny what he did. But so too he would not assume that Kumo didn't have it coming. They made their choice. They could have peace, or destroy themselves. They chose destruction, I was just the agent. Pain wanted to refute that, say Naruto was starting down the path that he had fallen down himself. But here, looking the other young man in the eye he could see it. Naruto meant it. He truly did still hope for a real peace. Happy to give everyone a second chance. He just, wasn't so naive to believe everyone would take it. Huh, interesting. Well, what would you like to discuss Naruto? Turning to face pain fully, Naruto pointed a finger down towards the building, where he could feel odd chakra, you have the four tails. I need it. That sent a confusing mess of emotions to run through pain. Just what do you need the four tails for? Are you not powerful enough? Or have you seen the light of what Akatsuki has been trying to accomplish? I'm not in it for power. I can say that much. And as for your group, nope. Still not in it to destroy nations willy-nilly. In fact, I still completely rebuke your plan. We don't need more bloodshed, more violence. Shared understanding can still come from mutual trust and everyday effort. At least, that's what I believe. Naruto held out a hand to pain, open and inviting, I'd like you to join me, unless that's too big a step for a worn down Uzumaki like you. Sniffing at the reminder of his own blood, Pain watched that hand warily, I've renounced that name, once I even knew what it was. I may share your blood, but not your ideals. Life. Life isn't as sacred as you believe. Naruto still held out his hand, a grin on his face. I figured as much. It's why you and I can't see eye to eye in the end. That isn't even your body, right? Shrugging as Pain flinched once more, Naruto pressed on, but I'm still here all the same. Offering a hand in friendship, of peace. Considering it and remembering his own words to Jiraiya and Conan, Nagato reached forward and clasped hands with Naruto. For the record, I will take you to task if you threaten rain. Hey, think you can keep up with me? Wanna give it a go? Naruto noted the firm grip, before Nagato backed away with a grin of his own. Another day perhaps. I admit you have a certain, talent, for surprises. Turning to lead the way back down into the tower, Nagato lead the way to the elevator, opening the doors and waiting for Naruto to join him. Be that as it may, do me one favor. Naruto clasped his hands behind his back, rocking on his heels slightly, sure sure. What's up? Leave Conan alone, if you would. Ignoring the cackling from Kurama, Naruto gave Nagato a tired look, I really wish those rumors would die. I'm not some wife-stealing monster on the prowl for every beautiful woman in the world. Just in case, I'm making sure. Nagato's grin grew as the doors opened, Conan staring at them with wide eyes as she noticed both Rinnegan uses were within striking distance of each other and it hadn't come to blows. Sir, Conan, we're going down. Surprised clearly on her face, Conan moved to join them in the elevator, as you wish. Stepping in and moving to the back of the car, she eyed up Naruto with a cautious eye. Naruto hummed as the elevator returned to its downward trip, 
though a thought came to the forefront, why'd you finally agree to help me? I made a promise. Oh. Grunting, Nagato stood a bit straighter. Yes, a promise. I will follow your lead in this, because you have seen a better path that I could not. So if you have concluded that you need the four tails, well, I shall give it to you. He looked to the blonde Uzumaki, you have a talent for the unorthodox. Is that a fancy way of saying I do crazy shit? Conan smiled, leaning forward just a bit, that would in fact be his way of saying that. Smirking, Naruto turned back to the blue-haired beauty, well isn't he just lucky to have you to explain things? Lip twitching, Nagato huffed, and you said they were rumors. I've done nothing, yet. Rolling his eyes as the elevator made its destination, doors opening as they stopped finally, Nagato walked out into the massive underground space. Naruto whistled as he walked into the cavern, taking in the sight of the massive statue that rose above them. Well that's creepy as well. Conan nodded, walking forward to stand next to Nagato's main body, attached to the statue via control rods, may I introduce, Nagato. His real body. Naruto came forward, nodding and looking the man up and down, well, no offense, but you look like shit. Huffing and ignoring the spike of pain it brought, Nagato turned sunken eyes towards Naruto, you really have no manners, do you? Looking up at the statue above him, Nagato sighed and wished his body was stronger, this is the Gedo Mazo. The remnants of the ten tails that even to this day craves to be reunited with its lost chakra. I'm connected to it both to keep it sealed, and to have the power to make my will a reality. Naruto hums at that, walking around the statue and getting a feel for it, and the four tails is sealed away inside of it so far. Yes. Humming again, Naruto came to stand before Nagato again. All right, so I guess I'm taking the ghetto then. I do not see how you will accomplish that. I am connected to it, if I were to leave, it would partially awaken. I'm not worried about that. So, you saying I can have it if I can control it? Nagato shared a look with Conan, who offered him another smile and a nod. Well, nothing ventured he supposed, yes, the ghetto and the four tails are yours. Perfect. One hand shooting forward, Naruto grinned at the white chains that burst from his jacket sleeve, winding up and around the statue before seals burned away into its surface. And done. Feeling something change, the pull on his chakra gone, Nagato watched Naruto with some concern, what have you done? Shrugging and forcing the black control rods to retract from Nagato's back, Naruto watched Conan catch him with concern in her eyes, what I said I would do, taking the ghetto and the four tails. With some effort, the ghetto was sealed away, another more tightly controlled pocket dimension much like Zetsu's. He didn't want a chance for time to pass and the ghetto to go through some unforeseen change. And with this, you have a new lease on life, and I have some free time finally. Helping Nagato to his feet, Conan watched Naruto turn to leave, just like that. What about us? What do you plan to do now? Naruto considered them both for a moment, what I've always done. Strive for peace. Well that, and make sure the world doesn't get destroyed by some idiots with more power than brains. Seeing the confusion on their faces, Naruto again shrugged, it's hard to explain, but it involves a goddess from an old fairy tale and reincarnation. But, for us, what will happen to Rain? Turning fully back to them, Naruto considered what it was she was really saying. Snapping his fingers, the hell path rose from the ground, grabbing Nagato from her to drag him into its mouth to chew him up. Not getting the same reaction out of her, she calmly watched as he spat out the complete and whole Nagato at her feet. And one free healing, courtesy of yours truly. Say Conan, you ever get tired of that one, you come and find me, Azushia would love to have you. Chuckling as that sounded much like Lord Jiraiya, Conan shook her head, I think, my place will always be here. I understand what you want to say. Suit yourself. Azushio is going to be joining Kanoa by the way. In sending aid to Rain, I mean. Sure we never were part of the walls that tore your country apart, but we'd like to offer our assistance all the same. So, watch the skies. And then Naruto was gone, flashing away back home after a fairly productive day. Rising to his feet with some help, Nagato marveled at his healed body. It had been a long time since he had been free of the ghetto. He had almost forgotten what moving freely through his own body felt like. Quietly he eyed his puppet, Yahiko. Conan. Yes Nagato. Let's, let's lay Yahiko to rest. I think he deserves that. 
Feeling tears beginning to bud at her eyes, Conan nodded quickly, I think, I think that is long overdue. And Conan, yes, thank you, for staying by my side all this time. Nagato shared a smile with the woman, who leaned in to hug him softly. I'll always be by your side, Nagato. This was good. Conan would have to thank Naruto later, for giving her back her best friend. B. Ah, what a day. Stretching his arms up over his head, Naruto stood in the entryway of his home as he felt out with his senses. The sun was setting which meant mostly everyone was back home. Checking on things also gave him a little warning as Karen speared him in the middle with a tackle. It saved him from being tossed to the floor. Your home. Giggling and hugging the man a bit tighter, Karen cooed as Naruto wrapped his own arms around her in turn, where did you run off to all day? Honestly, a little of everywhere. Beginning to walk down the main hall towards the living room, Naruto nudged the redhead under his arm, what have you been up to? Today, not much. Gave Isaribi access to Furfur again. Dumb name. Get over it. The Zozen Show are looking to launch their first ship construction soon, you should be here for that. Getting a nod from Naruto, Karen adjusted her glasses a bit, and finally, we got some news from Naruto and the others. They should be headed back soon. Well that's some good news. Naruto let Karen open the sliding door to the sitting room, taking in the sight of most of the family altogether. He could just make out Ino out back with a few of the other younger Uzumaki girls plodding about the garden. And was that Sauta further away training? Sure looked like it. Man, it's good to be home. Karen dragged him by the hand, it's good to have you home. Looking over at the distraction, Tayuya was already pointing a finger at him, you. Me. The academy is asking for an appearance from you, think you can handle that. Nodding along as Naruto is guided to the couch, settling in between Karen and Honoka, yeah, I'll swing by tomorrow. Probably good so I can check in with the Zozen show. He easily accepted Honoka leaning into his side with a sigh and a smile. A happy-looking Hanata and Kotohim both were leaning out from the kitchen, Hanata taking the lead, dinner will be ready shortly everyone. Just a little longer. And then they were gone, back to preparations with Kikyo. Relaxing back and staring up into the ceiling, Naruto thought about his day. Iwa. Kanoa. Rain. Hell at this point he might as well go and hit up rice or something. Well, maybe tomorrow. The girls might be a little cross with him if he disappeared. Plus he had something else to get up to. Leaning over and kissing first Honoka and the Karen, Naruto extracted himself and made for the back door, I'll be right back. Tayuya watched him go with a keen eye, nothing insane right. You can't miss dinner. Naruto gave her a thumbs up, I'm staying on the grounds, I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Are Sasuke and the others coming? Getting giggles from the girls, Naruto sighed. Maybe I'll offer a prayer for the edgelord later. Tayuya waved him off, might be a good idea. Hurry up, unless you want some company. I'll be right back, promise. That said Naruto jogged out into the yard, waving to a couple of the Uzumaki girls while avoiding an attempted sneak attack by the young Sauta. Grinning and launching the boy into the bushes with a carefully controlled blast of wind, Naruto was soon around the corner and out of sight of the others. Think you're good to do this now. Kurama's voice was quiet, cautious, and Naruto was quick to reassure him. Better now, while I still have the nerve to do it. With a thought his world shifted, another grayscale nothingness that only had one feature. The massive form of the Gedo Mazo stood before him, one baleful eye staring out into the void. White ceiling chains still holding and equally white seals burned into its flesh. Granted, this thing is creepy as hell. It just radiated malice and death. A disdain for all living things. Best get started with what you have then. Right. Floating up and sitting atop the husk of the ten tails, Naruto concentrated as he placed a hand down onto its great head. Separating a bit of chakra from himself, a portion of the sanbi, Naruto watched as another eye opened. Huh. So we don't need all of their chakra then. Just pieces will do. Probably for the best. That means we can keep it, and by extension her, weak. A full strength goddess did not sound like a good idea. Nodding along and continuing the process with the rest of the chakra portions that he had collected up to this point, Naruto slowly felt something begin to shift. Both in himself and in the statue under him. Something to keep an eye on he supposed. Finishing up and jumping away, Naruto looked up to all of the open eyes, all but one. Guess we'll need Gyuki then. 
Best wait for that. You know your women will skin you alive if you hurry this process up. Shuddering but refusing to look away from the monster that was the ghetto, Naruto sighed and readied himself to flash away. You aren't wrong. Guess we'll save Killer B and Gyuki for another day. Say, a week tops. A week sounds good. Your sister should be back by then and we can have a decent fight again. Can't you get excited about something else? Why couldn't you be a foodie or something? Bah, you'll be just like me one day little brother, just you wait. Hanata had to admit, giving classes at the academy every so often wasn't so bad. At the least, the view from the bay facing windows was nice, looking out over the sea and in the distance one could just make out Izushio's main island. They really needed to get around to naming them all. Behind her, Honoka was finishing up a drawing for a sealed diagram for the class of 30 students while off to the side Aruka watched on in silence. So, here you can see this particular array is built in order to combine several disciplines at once. Earth manipulation, seal matrix destabilization, and shape manipulation. In turn, this would allow anyone to carve their way through a traditional earthen wall or say, a castle's defensive perimeter. All with minimal chakra use. Honoka was smiling as she looked out over the class, they were all listening with such rapt attention. It was kinda exciting, but, this also has civilian use. Become proficient with these types of skills and you could find yourself a major boon to any mining or construction company on the planet. From tunnel digging to foundation excavation. The only limitation would be your own imagination. Several hands rose, and Honoka pointed to a boy no older than probably eleven. A few years from graduation then. But, Uzumaki sensei, why would we need to worry about how to use seals or any of our techniques outside of battle? What's the point? Walking back to stand next to Honoka, Hanata offered to answer in her stead. Raising a finger laden with chakra and activating her Byakugan, she grinning internally at the gasps from the group, you should always be thinking ahead. One day you may not be able to fight anymore. Or maybe you'll find you don't have the stomach for it. You'll want skills that have multiple uses then, won't you? Even the Hotaru, pride they have for their all-seeing eye and gentle fist, can also trade those talents for acupuncture and physical therapy. Dispelling her technique and motioning back to Honoka, Hanata offered another perspective for the ninja hopefuls. One day the world will have no need for us warriors. And we will need to trade our swords and kunai for shovels and garden tools once more. It is only until then, we build upon these skills in order to defend ourselves and our people. Understand. The same boy crossed his arms, a frown on his face, I guess Uzumaki-sama. It's just, what's the point then? If the world is going to be peaceful, do we really need to study and learn all this? Honoka nodded sagely as Hanata giggled, well, it's true that Izushio is striving for peace. But just as true is the opposite. Having techniques and skills that can be used for multiple use cases can only help you in the long run. Seals for storage or even teleportation, now used to make transport of goods and people easier. Nature manipulation, to better increase farming yields or assist in fishing. Again, you think it, you can make it happen. Plus, we may be called upon to defend our home, and you'll want to be prepared for such won't you. A girl this time, thick glasses and round chubby cheeks, raised her hand this time. Does that mean one day Azushio will have no need for ninja forces? Honoka answered once more, well, that's the goal. One day our profession won't be needed. And really, that's just fine if you think about it. Or maybe it'll change into something different. Require different skills or abilities. Sharing a look with Hanata, the other woman continued. With time comes change. Samurai once were the power of the land. Next came ninja and their special techniques. What comes after ninja? Well who knows really. Our hope is that with peace and a dwindling need for war, military power around the world will reduce. Winking at the students, Hanata leaned back against the wall while crossing her arms over her midriff, unless something else comes along and forces a regression. Honoka took the reins once more, which is why we train. Us. And you. Everything we have learned till now will be passed on to all of you. Tools for the next generation so that even though we hope for peace, you will always be prepared. Another hand rose, and Honoka pointed to a girl with a prideful smile on her face. My father says Izushio could rule the world one day. So does that mean we'll get to shape how things run in other villages soon? 
Aruka raised his voice slightly, preempting more questions. Let's remember everyone, this is a class for intermediate seal use and application. We can keep the politics for other lessons. Honoka shakes her head slowly as she gets the message to wrap this up. Oh number. While Azushio has strength and talent, we would never push for something like that. Honoka slapped a hand back to the board, making all of the students jump. Peace means also the ability for everyone to have their own free will. Forcing others to change is not our way. We offer options, incentives, a goal. But we won't force anyone to see our way as the only way. Well, not unless they force us. They would of course reference Iwa one day. She'd have to remember that that village had attacked them first. Forcing them to put him down as quickly as possible. Sharing a look with Hanata as the class conversed back and forth, Honoka clapped her hands to regain their attention. Now, let's continue with the lecture. Seal modification and simple relay circuits. Below the academy and deep within the fortress, Naruto was walking along with Mei and Karen, being led along by Suyoshi of the Zozensho. Naruto had been told they had a ship to show off to him and that he should come and see it when he had the time. Well recently he had nothing but time. As they came out from the fortress itself to the enclosed port, they could all see the massive flat top ship as soon as they walked out into the beehive of activity. Naruto could tell it looked a lot like the carriers from the land of sky only much, much larger. Tsuyoshi was already holding a hand out in the ship's direction, a wide smile on his face, we took great inspiration from the carrier group that attacked us. Through our salvage and research of the remains, the ships are a versatile platform that give many options and can be equipped for different roles. This model, slated to be the largest, is going to be our Maelstrom class of carriers. Featuring a total displacement of 90,000 tons, three screws for propulsion and electric motors powered by a truly revolutionary power generation system built upon Naruto-sama's own explosive seals. With a total crew complement reaching into the 1500, but fully loaded can reach roughly 2500 people not counting cargo hold space and deck space. We thought a carrier would be Azushio's greatest asset in the protection of our shipping lanes and territorial waters. Seeing the man pause as they continue to walk the length of the ship along the dock, May has a hand to her chin as she considers the nearly 300 meter ship, something like this, force projection is well and good, but I don't see any real armaments at all. Does Azushio or any of our allies really need something like this? We aren't looking to provoke the start of a new series of wars after all. Suyoshi nods and agrees, he may not be under May's direction anymore, but he could respect her as a leader. That Naruto-sama had apparently wooed her helped out, of course. Originally there had been some thought to building a great battleship first. To better protect Azushio from threats. But, after some thought and the invasion from Sky, we came to a different conclusion. We wanted something large that could not only transport troops and equipment, but also aid supplies and relief support efforts. Suyoshi paused as they came to about midship, where a gangplank waited to allow him on board. Could Azushio project force with this vessel? Sure, but will we? Well Naruto-sama has led me to believe that is not our mission, and I've chosen to believe him. Suyoshi motioned further down the dock, to the construction zone where they could all see several more ships in different states of readiness, two of which looked nearly complete. We have two supporting frigates we wish to launch with the Maelstrom as well, built on the idea that this small fleet of three ships will defend Azushio along with offering aid to our allies and those in need. Naruto was grinning as he stared up at the massive steel construction that bore his bingo book designation. We are meant to be peacekeepers, not conquerors, I like it. Karen has a different focus, mind latching onto something Suyoshi had said, the power source, how exactly does it work? Are we talking diesel or some other oil-based engine assembly like most other large ships? That the man answered her with a loud bellow laugh didn't faze her, she wanted answers. A ship this grand. No no Lady Uzumaki. Thanks to some tech salvaged from the ruins of the Land of Sky Fortress, and one of Naruto-sama's seals, we are instead harnessing the very energy released from the breakdown of heavy metal fuel. Naruto blinks, before a chuckle leaves his throat, you repurposed my version 2 bomb. Precisely. Suyoshi ignored the astonished looks on Karen and Mei's faces. We needed your help to slow down the process, and it took a little work to modify to land of sky energy converters to accept the raw energy to output electricity. But we did it. You're now looking at a ship capable of powering a small city in an emergency. 
As a bonus, refueling is only needed once every four to five years, unless we use it as an emergency power source. Nearly vibrating in place, Karen had more ideas for such a power station. Can I see the blueprints? We could modify our own land-based power stations with this easily. Just think of the possibilities. What are the drawbacks? Suyoshi scrubbed a hand through his hair, a truly excessive amount of heat. We use it to boil water and power further steam generators for auxiliary uses, including two launch catapults. With that in mind, a land-based power station near the coast would have no sweat in operating long term. Karen hums at that, okay, so coastal power stations, Sasuna probably can't benefit from this. But Azushio, Spring, Kiri could all stand to gain from this. Oh, didn't you say you had another something to show us? Already waving them onto the ship, Suyoshi nodded, yes, thanks to the new power generator, we came up with a few airplane designs we'd like you to take a look at. Mei walked along beside Naruto as they walked into the belly of the beast so to speak, Kiri could certainly use something like this. Our shipping lanes are always being harried by pirates and the like. Sadly Lady Mei, the Maelstrom class of ships will not be for sale. However, with Naruto Sama's okay, we may construct smaller carrier ships that can be sold. Suyoshi's answer came quickly and professionally. Mei turned to Naruto, oh dear. Rolling his eyes, Naruto nudged the woman in the side, we'll have a chat about it later. Either way, you know Azushio won't leave Kiri in the lurch if you need a hand. I appreciate that. Mei leaned in and kissed him on the cheek, flushing as his arm snaked around her middle, so, about these airplanes. Naruto followed behind Suyoshi, ducking into the oval-shaped access door just behind Karen. Guess they still had a lot going on, the interior of the ship was a beehive of activity still. He'd be busy for the rest of the day most likely then. B. Evening falls on Azushio, the sun having long set but the air remaining warm and humid. For the Uzumaki clan relaxing in their shared bath, this was a wonderful outcome. Well, it would be if their clan head wasn't often avoiding the mass of women. It is Kikyo who sits carefully between a content Kotohim and a happy Yuka that brings up his absence, where has Lord Naruto gotten to? Huffing and leaning against Taiyu with her hair tied up, Ino motions back towards the house, out seeing to Sauta's training. Something about making sure Sauta had a well-adjusted manly aura. Rolling her eyes, she ignores the girly giggling around her. Kikyo sighs and relaxed further as one of the younger girls passes around drinks, Uzumaki men and their oddities. But, Sauter is the only boy. He should spend some time with Lord Naruto. She would have preferred some older blood as well. But, she had tried, and failed, to convince Shokiro off of his path. Stubborn men. The lot of them. I suppose there are some habits I hope he doesn't pick up. Sayuri floated by with a smile on her face, there are a few habits that I hope he does pick up as well. Sauter was like everyone's cute little brother. Well, except for Kikyo, she treated him like a son for sure. Hanata looks ready to defend Naruto and his various habits, but is distracted by the sliding door opening. Expecting to see Naruto and Sauter there, she and everyone else are surprised to see Kiyuki and her group, back from their travels. Kiyuki. Naruto is already holding up a hand, yo. It sure felt good to be home. Kiyuki slid into the water next to Hanata, watching she and join her on Hanata's other side as she accepted a drink from one of the other women, it is so wonderful to be back home. No more long trips for me for a while. She accepted a hug from Hanata easily, happy to see her fellow sister wives. So, what have we missed? We'll update you all as well. Tayuya is the first to speak up, pointing a finger back at him, ah. You were gone, what have Yarl done first? How much did Nariko blow up? I'm not that bad. Nariko pouted as she relaxed in the warm waters with Fu, though she wouldn't admit just how close to the truth they were. She was just, overzealous. Yeah. Kayuki sighs and she and giggles, thankfully the eastern continent is in one piece. We were able to secure the lands of vegetables and birds to our side before we decided to pull back and return home. Kayuki looked around for Naruto, the main reason they had to return at all, we heard some interesting rumors. Tayuya nods, ah, well, yeah. Naruto will update you with the specifics, but we had some excitement here ourselves. A couple of invasion attempts, Iwa is now our vassal state. And Kumo is gone. No ninja village left to talk about. 
Seeing the four women stare at her blankly, Tayuya launches into a full retelling of everything that had happened while they had been away. From Iwa's attempt and Naruto killing their Jinchuriki and Cage, to Kumo's return and attempt to invade, along with the Rakage's death and B's capture. Then of course, Kumo's destruction. Kyuki hummed in thought as Tayuya finished up her retelling of the last few weeks. Hand cradling her swelling belly, she silently gave thanks for the warm waters on her ankles, well, good to know we returned when we did. I'll have some words for Naruto and his antics. Making more work for me like this. I just know the lightning Daimyo is going to be raising a fuss. And stone. Ugh. That old man never knows when to shut up. Karen is the one to speak up next, watching Tayuya relax back against Eno, it wasn't like Naruto had much of a choice anymore. He really did try. Holding up a hand to stall any further words, Kiyuki shared a look with everyone, I'm not against what Naruto did. No. I approve. I just wish it didn't lead to more work. Rather, I wish the various Daimyo had reigned in their cage. Hanata poked her fellow wife in the side, perhaps it's time to delegate some of the work to others then. Stop traveling for a time in order to rest at home with family. Nodding at her side, Shin leaned forward to look at Kiyuki, she's right you know. While our travels were fruitful and necessary, from here we can put together diplomatic teams and let them work for us from here. The word is out that Azushio is making friends and building alliances. We don't need to go out personally anymore. Groaning and relaxing back, Kiyuki nods, I know. I just, I like to have control. I want to know it's going exactly how I want. Ino giggled, gonna have to give up the rain sooner or later. Kiyuki could accept that, well, she was sure she could eventually, I just hope those old men clinging to power don't cause more problems later down the road. Tayuya shrugs, well we can worry about old men and diplomacy later. We have more important matters to update you on now. Tayuya points directly at Hanata, who blushes a bit. Starting with that little rabbit next to you. Hanata took in Shin and Kiyuki looking at her expectantly while across the way she could see Nariko and Fu watching her as well. Nodding quickly, Hanata pushed her fingers together in her nervous tick she still couldn't completely get rid of, I'm pregnant. Twins. Shein was already hugging her tightly while Kiyuki clapped happily. She was happy at the attention, if a little embarrassed. Kiyuki is instead looking towards a content-looking Honoka, I'm actually surprised. I was sure you would be next. Honoka gave her a thumbs up, oh don't you worry. I'm not far behind. Just wait and see. Activating her eyes for a moment, Hanata smirks and relaxing back into Shein's hug, be careful what you wish for Honoka. Nariko stretches her arms up above her head, so, where is my idiot brother? Out training Sauta out on the ground somewhere. Ino was still irritated. She wanted to train the little snot too. Hmm, that's so. Nariko is already standing from the water, sharing a quick kiss with Fu. Maybe I'll just go and see about this, just in case. Padding away quickly, Fu sighs and readies herself to potentially intervene. Looking around, it's Temari who finally notes the missing member of the group, what happened to Mei. Kiyuki perks up at the mention of the other cage, Mei was here. Karen nods, yeah, but after our inspection of the Zozen Show's ship today Naruto had to take her and her guards back to Kiri. Or, I would have liked to spend some time with her. Mei is fun. Kiyuki meant it as well. Mei gave her such wonderful ideas. I'm sure Naruto will flash Yar over there anytime you want. Karen assures her fellow wife as the conversations mellow out some, though Sayuri is floating her way. Hmm. So, about Naruto-sama, unable to finish her thought, the ground rumbles and shakes as they all can hear an explosion nearby. All conversations cease, until they can hear cackling over the air. Oh ho 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 ho, you call that an explosion boy. Here, let me help you. You crazy bitch. He's a kid, a kid. Take it easy. He's an Uzumaki ain't he? He'll be fiend. Now common. Show auntie what you got. Another explosion, and all eyes turned first to Fu and then to Hanata. Fu was already pulling herself out of the water, we just got here. She couldn't wait till the morning at least. Hanata nodded and rose to follow after her, let's wrangle those two and have a word with them. It was looking to be another long night in the Uzumaki compound. B. Walking along in the forest surrounding his home, Naruto gave thanks for an easy week and long parties. Jacket off with the warm weather coming, 
He walked with his hands in his pockets as he considers everything that had happened over the last week. Kurama was the first to laugh at him. Honoka is pregnant finally. Quintuplets. The seed is strong indeed. Sighing but nodding along, Naruto curses his luck. Well, she sure got what she wished for. And I don't think we're ever getting a grand party like that out of the city again. I'm pretty sure no work got done at all. Blame your genetics. No contest there. I'm sure Honoka will be trying to kill me later once her body starts to change. What was it you said? Oh yes. You're sturdy, you'll be fine. I take it back. I'm going to die at this rate. A hand came up, scrubbing through his scalp and longer hair. Twin bangs entered and left his vision. Coward. You wanna take care of a bunch of kids. Not my job. I'm turning you into a plush toy. You wouldn't. Kurama turned pleading eyes to his partner, please. Don't tempt me. They both shared a chuckle as Naruto continued to walk along. It had been, nice, to have a simple week. Missions were steady if simple. Wave and their shipping empire was doing well. Their population was still growing but now they had confirmed rain had begun to receive some aid finally. With that, several more airships were under construction as well. It really did seem like life was much easier now that Kumo and Iwa were no longer issues. If I had known things would be this simple, I would have gotten rid of Kumo and Iwa sooner. Kurama settles down in his mindscape, there's also the chance things would have been different if you had struck down those villages sooner. Maybe the world really would have seen you as a power-hungry tyrant then. Hmm, that's a good point too. Naruto hums as they come upon the clearing holding Zetsu seal matrix. The statue undisturbed and unchanged. Guess on to our next order of business for now. Flashing away instead to the island where he had saved Honoka and later fought Yugito, Naruto touches down on volcanic rock and open land. Time for Killer B's reckoning is it? Naruto nods, yeah. Taking a deep breath to steady himself, he summoned the scroll holding the Kumo Jinchuriki. It was with a negligent toss that saw the scroll unravel and be dumped carelessly onto the rocky ground. Bleeding and gasping for air, Naruto moved to make sure the other man didn't die right away. Rinnegan activating, he summoned the giant head of the Hell Path, eating B's body in order to heal him before spitting his refreshed self back on the rock. With a smirk Naruto walked up to the weakened killer B. Welcome back to the land of the living. I comma I should be dead. Gasping for breath, Killer B looked up to Naruto from his sprawled out place on the ground. You should have killed me. Haven't ruled that out yet. Not that it matters. You're about as much of a threat to me right now as a newborn. Naruto put his hands to his hips as he stood over the downed ninja, have an idea of why I kept you alive. Chuckling despite himself and what he felt, B nodded, for my biju of course. What other reason would you have to spare me? Well, Certainly isn't for this witty banter I suppose. Naruto shrugged as B dragged himself into a sitting position. You could have walked away from this you know. You had the power. I never would have abandoned my home. And now it's gone because of this foolishness. How does that make you feel? Watching B freeze in place, he didn't have to reach out with his senses to know the anguish that rolled through B's mind. It wasn't a question of if the man cared about his people, but more, he hadn't cared enough to see the bigger picture. They're all gone then. B looked down to the ground, not wanting to see the face of the QB container, everyone. Yes, no survivors. B knew he had no right to be any sort of remorseful or angry about Karui. Sure, he knew. Always knew she was his. Of course he never made an effort to reach out to her. To really teach her outside of some few sword skills. To show her some type of fatherly affection. She had been a constant reminder of just what he had done, of the monsters that Kumo was willing to become. But still, the knowledge that she was gone and on Naruto's orders. Did, did they suffer? Shaking his head Naruto decided to throw the man a bone, it would have been more or less instant. They shouldn't have felt a thing. Small mercy I suppose. B sat there, arms limp at his sides as Naruto stood before him. For what it's worth, I wished for things to be different. Frowning Naruto finally stepped forward to put a hand to B's forehead, not enough to actually make a change. And then the world shifted, both men finding themselves within B's seal and mindscape. Behind them Gyuki stood there silently behind the bars of his prison. Naruto was quick to bow before the biju, sorry we had to meet this way Gyuki. There was no other way. 
A pause as the ancient mass of chakra considered what it wanted to say. You are a bit foolish, but I suppose I can forgive it due to the eventual outcome. Yuki steadfastly did not make eye contact with B, focused only on the Uzumaki intruder. You'll be releasing me then. Naruto nods, that's the plan. Though I'd like to ask Yar for a bit of a favor. Yuki tilted his massive head for a moment before nodding once, some of my chakra then. I can part with that. A small price really for someone who holds true to their ideals. B stands, taking a step towards his long-time partner, Yuki. I R. Uh. Yuki however tapped the bars holding him in place with a tentacle, causing the space to shudder and forcing B to stop, so how about it Naruto boy? Let me out of here. I'd like to find a new place to rest out in the real world if you don't mind. Getting the hint that Yuki didn't want anything to do with B, Naruto nodded, sure thing. Want me to send Yar off somewhere. With barely a thought white chains erupted from his arms, wrapping themselves around the bars of Yuki's cell and eroding him away quickly. Getting this over with quickly would only help him. Yuki stood and brushed through the crumbling remains of his jail with ease, bringing a tentacle forward and pressing it into Naruto's chest in order to transfer some chakra, I think I'll hang around Azushio until you've finished with your little task. After that, who knows, the world is a large and beautiful place. I'm sure I can find somewhere to enjoy some peace and quiet for a time. Eyes finally trailing to the quiet container that he had once trusted, Yuki sighed and turned away from them both. I think some time away from humanity will do me some good. Understanding Yuki's pain, Naruto turned to be slowly as the man directed his gaze down to the dark floor, you know, most don't survive their biju being ripped out of them. That is probably for the best. I don't deserve to live after everything I've done. Dying and joining his comrades sounded good right about now. Sighing, Naruto pulled himself free of B's mindscape, standing back as with a roar of violent chakra Gyuki freed himself from B's destroyed seal and body. Strength difference aside, it was always humbling standing before a fully revealed Biju. Gyuki didn't say anything once he reformed and stared down at Naruto and the gasping B, but the ground shook and rumbled as he rushed to the waters around the island and dove into the surf. To where Naruto probably wouldn't know, but he did say he would stick around in the meantime. Turning his eyes to the gasping bee, Naruto noted that while severely weakened, he certainly wasn't dead or dying. Looks like Yuki still had something of a soft spot for you. Groaning and laying on his back, B considered that. I'm so, weak now. Yup. Welcome to life without a biju I suppose. Naruto walked forward, slapping a hand to B's right arm in order to place a seal there to burn harshly into his flesh. Consider this island your new home. You can't leave, the seal won't let you. Use this time to think about what you've done, and maybe repent. Chuckling and shaking his head as he ignored the pain in his arm, B looked up to the sky, what's stopping me from biting off my own tongue? Ending it all now. Here Naruto finally shrugged as he turned away from the Kumo ninja, guess you could, for what good it would do you. It would definitely show you to be a real coward I suppose. That you'd rather run away to death rather than face the consequences of your actions. A frown pulling at his lips, B still remained looking up into the clouds, and what of you? Will you face your end with your head held high? After everything you've done? Of course. I've done everything I have for the betterment of not just my own people, but for everyone I can reach. Naruto started to walk away, already putting the worries about B out of his mind. Who knows, maybe in a decade or two we can sit and chat again. Come to terms. I doubt you'll ever forgive me for what I've done to your family, nor will I forgive you for Kumo's destruction. Naruto paused, turning purple eyes back towards B, I never said anything about forgiveness. Only understanding. I think you can manage that one day. And then he was gone, leaving B to lay alone on the rocky earth. Understanding her. Might be a little late for that. No weapons on him, no avenue for escape, and no will to kill himself either. Guess he really was a coward all the way to the end. Though, he wished he could apologize to Gyuki. Below the waters of the island, Gyuki sat and felt out about B's emotions. Grunting at hard-headed idiots, and unsure who he was talking about, Gyuki finally dove down deeper into the island's surrounding waters. He needed a good nap. Far away Naruto had already put the saga with B and Kumo behind him, already shifting himself between realities. Face to face once more with the Gedo Mazo, he
he appreciated the true malice that exuded from it. Kami this thing is gross. To think a goddess will be born from it. Right. Jumping up to the statue's head, Naruto once more added the final piece of the puzzle. The final eye of the statue opened, where it rumbled in place for a moment but then settled down. Ha. Huh. Your seals are holding strong. Kurama did however feel something beginning to shift, maybe I spoke too soon. They are based around severing the connection between the body and chakra. Among other things. But these are the remains of a goddess. Sitting down and crossing his legs under himself, Naruto considered what to do. He could leave it like this, or, he could take at least one more step. Just in case. I really hope I don't have to hunt down the Biju again. I'm sure they'd be pissed off about that. Absolutely. But I think your theory is sound. Sighing and rolling off the statue with grace, Naruto touched down at the statue's base in a gentle crouch. From there he unsealed yet another massive scroll, unrolling it and dumping the body of Madara onto the ground with a thud. Guess. Step 1. The hell path was summoned up, the head again dragging the body into its mouth to chew it up and heal it with some effort. That took a bit more chakra than he was used to. Madara really was a monster wasn't he? Wait, you're reviving him. I'm getting a good fight again after all. Down boy, I just need to heal the body. No fighting for you. Lame. Spare me, we'll go fight Narako after this. He owed her one for interrupting his training session with Sauta. Well, I suppose that could be some fun. With Sakura and Sasuke. Now we're talking. Watching the soulless body of Madara get spit back out onto the floor with little fanfare, Naruto set to work drawing seals and inscribing them both on Madara's body and the very air around him. This was a bit of a tedious task, but one he had been practicing and preparing for. Above him, the Gedo statue was beginning to change. Hmm, guess I better hurry up ha. Huh? I don't know, how tough can this thing be really? Not indulging Kurama, Naruto finished up his seals and backed away from Madara's body a few paces, tough enough that I don't want to deal with it. Chains born from a lot of hard work and more than a few pointers from Karen and Honoka both burst free from his back to build a dome around the ghetto trying to free itself of its bonds. Moment of truth. Chakra burst free from his body and the chains, activating the seals on Madara and pulling the transforming ghetto into the subjugation seal inscribed at his navel. The process was more than a little taxing, but as the wind and chakra rushed all around him he finally watched the reviving Jubi be pulled into the still body with a final rush of chakra. Not waiting, chakra chains wrapped around said body to lock it in place, before more seals appeared on the floor and in the air around him once more. Watching and waiting for some sign of a negative change, Naruto finally sighed and stood up to his full height again. Rubbing the sweat from his brow, he watched as Madara's body changed before his eyes in real time. Was that a horn? Was his skin turning grey? Weird. I think we can call it here for today. Or. I half expected him to get up and start fighting. There's no soul in that body to move it. And the Jubi is a mindless mass of chakra that seeks to complete itself. It's a simple beast that even some basic Uzumaki seals could probably lock it away as it is right now. Naruto grinned as he watched his seals continue to hold, we've got all the time in the world now. So, now we unite Zetsu with the corpse and that's it. Kaguya is summoned. Reborn is the better term, but yeah. That'll be the end of it. More like the start. I'm still putting money on her jumping you. Not this again. I've got enough kids coming as is. You are doing a commendable job of repopulating the Uzumaki clan all on your own. Horny little monkey. I blame the girls. He also wasn't liking the way some of the Uzumaki rescue girls were looking at him lately. Kikyo he could understand, having taken Sauta under his wing, so she was more concerned for the boy and not after him. But Yuka, Sayuri, and another of the girls, Yukina, were starting to make his senses itch. Naruto sighed and shifted back to the real world, considering the statue that held Zetsu's own pocket dimension. No. He promised the girls he would take some time and relax. He'd get skinned if he broke that promise. Speaking of, I better go check on the girls, make sure they're good. Well I'm looking forward to a good fight. Yeah yeah, I'll drag Nariko out of her room. One more step. One where he hopefully didn't have to fight a literal goddess. Either with fists or in the sheets. Coward. I'm feeding you to Kaguya first if it comes to that. You wouldn't. Hmm. Naruto started to walk back towards the compound a new spring in his step. Little brother, don't joke about this. 
More silence, and Kurama stomped a paw to the floor of the seal, be nice to me. The little bastard. He'd start playing with his hormones or something, really make sure he wouldn't be getting any sleep in the near future. Ignore him would he? No one ignored the great Kurama. That will be all for this video, be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment down below for more videos, goodbye.